My name is Frank Sisson. Uh, I'm, I guess, today the editor-in-chief of the Ruszewski Project. Uh, I was going to begin remarks uh, uh, that would have gotten me in a lot of trouble with many English teachers, and I was saved by Google. Uh, that is, somewhere in my mind was that uh, the good men do live on beyond them, and the evil is interred with them. That's not the way Shakespeare wrote it. Uh, so, fortunately, I advise my students, check your sources quickly. I still maintain it's a, it's a worthy adage uh, for today. Uh, that is, uh, we are going to be dealing with two and then a number of other, mostly men, but some women as well. Uh, uh, but the two who will play the principal role in our discussion will be Mikhailo Ruszewski and John Yaremko, uh, two great sons uh, of the Ukrainian people. Uh, and uh, both of them uh, were dedicated at the end of their life uh, to endeavors uh, from which we benefit to this day. Uh, in the case of Ruszewski, uh, the volume uh, that we are celebrating the appearance of today uh, was the work of his very last years the last years in which he could create uh, under extremely difficult conditions uh, to write this, this volume. And we'll be discussing as well why this volume came down to us. And then there, there is largely the work of a good woman, his, his daughter, uh, who uh, saw to it that the book was published. Uh, and uh, the work uh, of John Yaremko, who had been a patron of this community for many, many years. But at the end of his life, he had, and I'll turn to that again later, of how that came about, uh, he uh, decided that he would like to sponsor a volume of Ruszewski. Uh, and uh, I had hoped he would be with us when we, this volume would come out. He is not, this, he lived many, many years, uh, uh, but uh, we at least can celebrate his life and all he did uh, for us. Uh, now to turn to the volume. Uh, I'll be speaking a bit about the, the history part of the volume and Professor Magochi after me. Uh, but for those of you who do not yet have it in your hand, and I appreciate that many of you will leave with it in your hand, I hope. Uh, first of all, uh, we tend to say uh, you can't tell a book by its cover. But we are very proud of the covers of the Ruszewski volumes. That is, a great deal of effort goes into finding appropriate imagery for this cover and to publish books uh, on a level uh, that those of us who still love books in this age of digitalization and everything else can appreciate what has come out. And you see on this cover uh, a woodcut, an uh, etching of uh, Hetman Wehovski, only recently found in the last decade, uh, and, we didn't, and as close as we get to his life, uh, that is, I cannot tell you if he actually looked this way. What I can tell you is this is his first portrayal, not done during his life. And on the back, the coat of arms of Wehovski, when uh, and, uh, uh, all of you practice your reading to read around the seals of this, uh, but you will see that he is the great hetman and the principality of Rus is mentioned on this. Uh, and uh, so in that case, we have uh, a rather beautiful volume. Now, this is the last volume uh, of Ruszewski's work, as far as we know. And why do I say as far as we know? There has long been a discussion that perhaps he finished yet another part of this volume, that it w went further. This has been one of the great mysteries of Ukrainian scholarship as to whether this volume exists or does not exist. Uh, it seems, and so our scholars say from most of the evidence we have, that probably there wasn't another volume of the history of Rus. So this indeed will be the last volume. But I'll turn in, in a few minutes to explain why we have a mystery like this about the major history of Ukraine. Uh, that may be a, a little discussion of how these volumes come about, why they exist. As you know, uh, the Yatsik Center sponsors these volumes. It was uh, the hope, desire, will of, of Peter Yatsik, Petro Yatsik, who, who formed the center that this project would be undertaken. That is, that uh, the quite monumental undertaking of putting out 
the monumental volumes of Rushevsky in English be done. Uh, and uh, it is the mandate of our center to complete them. And we are coming near, there is still a way to go, but we are now well advanced and that I can say that uh, uh, within the next five years for sure you'll see them uh, all, and we, but we will be editing them at as fast a pace as we can to complete this project. I might say, say there were doubting Thomases when we began this, so that I will feel particularly good when we get all the volumes out. Uh, I think on occasion uh, there are those who say, but if Ruszewski managed to write them all by himself, uh, how is it that it's taking so long just to translate them? So then I always have to explain a bit. And both issues have to be brought up. One, uh, Ruszewski was a genius. He was a titan of industry. Uh, that the man could have written so many scholarly works uh, mo that most people can't even read in their life shows, uh, shows what he was able to do. He didn't quite do it alone. He fortunately had research assistants, groups that helped him, large collectives that work on it. So it was a person leading it and writing it, but it was a much greater undertaking that involved many, many Ukrainian scholars, many of whom who ended their life tragically, particularly those working on the last volumes because they were in the Soviet Union uh, and uh, uh, disappeared into gulags and, and uh, uh, never were able to follow on the creativity they would have as the students of Ruszewski. But going back to the other, which I think is worthwhile explaining, uh, you know, why? What is, what is the work that we are doing and undertaking? You will hear later from our translator of this volume, and indeed now we can say that Marta Odinek has translated more of the Ruszewski project than anyone else, and you can go and look at volumes 8, 9, to one and nine to two to see uh, the mastery of the work that she has been involved in, but it takes good translators who know, uh, know Ukrainian well and English and are willing as well to search for uh, difficult words and find equivalents and work with an editorial board and work with many scholars on producing these volumes. It takes editors, in this case our managing editor was Miroslav Yurkevich in, in Edmonton, who go and check the translator sentence by sentence to make sure nothing was left out. Uh, as good as our translators are, there are ways in these lengthy volumes things happen, and check over it and give a second eye to this and go over it very closely, uh, closely for language to make sure how this works out. And then there are uh, lots of scholarly editors and consultants. Um, there are many sources in many languages uh, uh, that are quoted. All of them have to be translated. We have to be sure what those words words are. Uh, frequently we turn for terminology, for names, to not only our in-house uh, in -house group, many of whom will be speaking today, but people outside to give us consultations on them. Uh, and uh, occasionally, uh, Ruszewski wrote an awful lot. Uh, there are typographical errors, there are things that creep in, there are needs at times to check something out, and you know, he too could get a wrong page occasionally, and if we can, we would like to give the right page uh, if he happened to miss on that. So we work uh, upon that as well. Uh, all of these takes a tremendous amount of effort. We have a, we have, uh, a, a team in-house which has, is, I think, very experienced on this, and we have created a whole terminology for, the, for putting out these. And then we turn to scholars, uh, because one of our goals is to bring Ruszewski to a world community. Uh, and English has become that world language, the lingua franca, strangely enough, we could call it now, but the language that most people are going to read in the scholarly world. Uh, and to do that, to bring Ruszewski to them, to works that were written uh, quite a while ago now, by now, even, even in this work, the last of his works, it's all, we're already 80 years from when he produced it. So we want to be able to uh, place Ruszewski, uh, to give him full credit for his accomplishment, uh, to also provide material that the contemporary reader would need to understand, and understand him, and understand uh, what, indeed, uh, what indeed is the significance of, of this work. And so we invite uh, noted scholars to write introductions, to place the 
book in some context to describe what was the impact of Hrushevsky at his time, to deal with all possible, what kind of literature came out later. Uh, it was a material not available to Hrushevsky, whom, uh, which is worth now considering and might have changed his views had he had that material. Uh, so you want to get people who are, who are well versed in this. For this volume, we were fortunate to have two uh, noted scholars. One, Professor Andrew Pernal of Brandon University in Manitoba, a specialist in the Union of Hadyach. And the Union of Hadyach is the, one of the great events of this volume and of Ahovsky's life, an attempt to come to an accommodation between the forming Ukrainian Kazakh state and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, an attempt at a Polish-Ukrainian rapprochement, one that failed, uh, as many have in the past. Uh, we hope not in the future, but, uh, but at least uh, uh, Professor uh, Pernal, who has written the major work on the Union of Hadyac, writes one of our introductions. And the other introduction is written by Yaroslav Fedoruk, another great specialist in this period. He worked particularly on uh, the truce of Vilnius of 1659, 56, 1656, uh, and uh, uh, huge book. You may ask why on this truce of Vilnius, because this was the point where Khmelnytsky realized that the Russians were betraying him fully and that he had better find new allies and tries to turn to the Swedes and other such groups. But Yaroslav Fedoruk is of, of significance because he's a scholar from Ukraine, and that's what's helped our project tremendously. When we began, we didn't know that the Soviet Union would fall uh, and uh, uh, that Ukraine would be independent and we would be able to work closely with scholars in Ukraine. Uh, well-versed uh, in, in the sources of the events, and a specialist on Hrushevsky himself as well. Uh, and uh, Fenderuk uh, writes in this book uh, about a 70-page, 60-some page introduction. Uh, it is a superb work, detective work, that tells you what happened with Hrushevsky in those last four years of his life when he's writing this volume when he's arrested, when he goes to Moscow in exile, uh, what, what were the circumstances he worked under, what was going on at the Academy of Sciences, what happens when the pressure of, of the NKVD, of the secret police, work, destroy the institutions Ruszewski was involved in and uh, put on tremendous pressure uh, against all of his students, uh, and of course to show uh, fully uh, what was the intellectual atmosphere when Hrushevsky is writing this work? So it's a wonderful study that does of a very sad time, of a very important time for those of us who have just uh, seen the month uh, of the Holodomor uh, uh, commemorations. We have to remember that, that uh, beyond the starvation of people was the destruction of a cultural elite that was going on in the early 1930s in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, this was going on against Ruszewski and his colleagues. And then he goes on to tell us uh, what's the process by which this one manuscript is left behind, and uh, the daughter of Ruszewski, Katarina, uh, manages in very difficult circumstances by very, a very convoluted part of Stalinist policy. There appears to be a period when the Stalinist policy is going to change in the mid-30s, and she's able to publish that last unpublished volume of her father that he had left behind. And then within two years of her publishing the volume, she's arrested and disappears in the gulag and dies. That is, you know, Mrs. Ruszewska, Maria, the mother and the daughters remain in the apartment trying to save his manuscripts. They are later taken, many of them are destroyed. We lose whole precious works of Ruszewski uh, at least two volumes of his history of Ukrainian literature disappear. And it's that process that makes us so unsure of whether there was another volume that some people reputed existed. And it can explain why such, a, uh, such uh, an event, uh, you know, such a, such a thing that was seemingly obvious, how many volumes were there, are things we don't know. But it also shows what happened to uh, a whole intellectual legacy. Uh, that could be destroyed at this period uh, as these people are attacked, as their manuscripts are taken away, and gives us a feeling of how important it was that they, they in this difficult situation, continue to work on 
uh, believing in what they were doing. Uh, this volume, as, as a volume, uh, is, the, is the shortest of the volumes. It wasn't really finished. That is, he was working on these topics. If he had had more time, I think that, that this volume uh, would have been more ample, certainly. Uh, it, it shows some of the signs of that. It is meant that our, our reviewers, our, our editors, have also tried to fill in uh, you know, what, what other materials might have been available, what, what came out after. Uh, then the other thing that we, fr we do in these volumes frequently is we provide bibliographies of subsequent literature. And this volume is particularly valuable for this because Professor Andrew Pernal, uh, Pernal uh, did two bibliographies. One of, we did massive bibliographies in volume eight. That was a while ago this came out, and more literature has come out, so we updated those bibliographies, and then provided full bibliographies for, uh, for uh, the material that's on the, on the events described in this volume. That is the hetmancy of Ivan Vyhovsky. Uh, that also involves very important affairs for the church, the election of a new metropolitan of the church after, after Metropolitan Kosu passes away, and then uh, the Hadyat Treaty, and, and a lot of it also deals with Russian-Ukrainian relations, and Hrushevsky had access to a massive number of sources. Uh, so those are the kinds of topics that are discussed in this volume uh, by Hrushevsky, and Professor Pernal has added that. As always, we have our list of rulers. You can find almost everyone ruling in Europe and, and the Middle East in, our, in these tables that we have at the end of the book. And then, uh, uh, Marcos Deck will speak uh, later about the publication of the book, but the index is a very important part of each of these volumes. That is, uh, uh, a good index is necessary for every scholarly work. Uh, it, extremely important uh, that these be done well, uh, and uh, we are grateful to our press for doing that. Thank you.